Hi, good afternoon, everyone. First of all, probably just introduce a little bit of myself. I am, uh, my name is Jose Luis Alzamendi. I've been working with INVEX uh, for 13 years. Uh, my background is primarily, I was in operations and systems of credit cards. So along the presentation, you'll see that uh, a little bias towards credit cards, and that's why the title of the presentation, Transactions, because that's, you, you have a lot of those on the... Uh, just to give you a little bit of context of, of what is INVEX. INVEX is a Mexican bank. It's actually one of the few Mexican banks because most of the banks in Mexico are foreign, uh, namely Santander, BBVA, Citibank, HSBC, and then a couple of Mexican banks after that. Uh, INVEX is one of the few. One started in 1991, basically as a stock broker. When the big oil crisis back, back then, all the banks were reprivatized and, and so forth. So the banks were consolidating. Invex took like the opposite side of asking for a banking li license. The story is uh, pretty successful. And uh, the holdings, this just to give you a little bit of color, the numbers there uh, don't matter a lot. Uh, the bank is basically divided into three sectors. Financial services, which is the one I'm going to be discussing today. Also, you know, as in Mexico, renewables is basically on the top news every day because of the potential and so forth. The bank entered a few years ago on, on that energy sector. And then in what we call infrastructure, which is basically highways, uh, petroleum logistics, uh, as they say, and some type of uh, public-private uh, partnerships like hospitals for the health, government health system and, and things of that nature. Okay. Uh, so, as I told you, I'm going to just focus on the financial sector, which is the one that I am responsible for, on that part of the IT. Uh, to give you a little bit of color on the bank, uh, we are the third one in the country in terms of trusts. Trust is kind of a fiduciary, it's one, one mechanism or one uh, tool that is used, vehicle that is used in Mexico for a lot of transactions like uh, hotels in the beaches, which cannot be foreign known, and so forth. You have to make a contract with the bank, so actually the bank is kind of the owner. But it, it also applies for, for persons. It's not only for businesses. We, we grew, we started uh, being a bank until uh, 20, 2010, a, a little bit less. We were just on the wealth banking, on, and on, that, on that fiduciary, and some corporate banking. So, as you can see, we are holding like 7.6 billion of assets on the private on wealth banking and 31, uh, 31 billion dollars in, in all stockbrokers. Uh, you know, that's uh, funds from companies, from corporations, trusts as well, and so forth. And important is the last one. Uh, we are number six in the credit card uh, market coming all the way from basically having 50,000 cards uh, 10 years ago or so. And uh, our portfolio in pesos is like, it's shy of 22 billion now, which is like, uh, in pesos, which is like a billion and 1.3 billion dollars, more or less. That's basically the... Uh, so then, this will give you a landscape of where we're growing. Uh, it's it try to give you a little landscape on the on the credit card uh, landscape in Mexico. So basically, uh, we started Invex, as you saw, top, uh, the, on the bottom line. 2013, we had like 50, 60,000 cards. We are going to be having a million cards, we expect, by July. So that's an exponential growth, as you can see. And uh, that will give us uh, more or less 5% market share, which we plan to, to increase to 10% over the next couple of years, uh, trying to surpass HSBC, which is the fifth one. So we will be having 10% of market share and being the fifth one in, in two years' time, if, if all things stay, stay the way they are, and we keep our growth. In 2020, we had an assessment, because we grow so, so fast, that on, on the systems arena, we, had, uh, we were managing, our strategy was to have, like, pass, a platform as a service on basically our credit card core, which is uh, out of the U.S., not far from here, it's thesis. So basically, we became platformless, uh, kind of making a parallel to what we have been seeing today. So in that, in that, in that sense, we had this API-ready platform, 
but we had to, since forgot to say that the bank is branchless, so we didn't have an interaction through the clients other than either by phone that we didn't like or by an app. That's basically, basically what we had. So we had, when we made that decision, we had to have like a service bus, which we didn't have. We were just building APIs point to point with not exactly the best governance, if you will, but that was a fact. So that's when we decided to, to go for WSO2. At the time, we just used the, AP, the API manager and enterprise integrator. That was our first, and it was only for the credit card piece of the bank. Then, uh, two years after, systems consolidated, and we are expanding the use of WSO2 for the other part of the bank, for the private banking and for the, for the trusts. So, uh, basically, another thing that is interesting that I was talking, as you know, in Mexico, there's no open banking yet. However, there's a little bit of unfair competition of some of the fintechs that had started, uh, you know, launching products. We have, like, new bank from Brazil entering. So, in our, in our response to that one, we launched uh, last year, like, a new bank, but that is supported by the bank, which is... Uh, very interested in Mexico because banks, we have like a, the equivalent of the FDIC, so we have, give a lot more trust to the clients than the fintechs that you put your money. And in countries like Mexico where law enforcement is not uh, quite where it should be, uh, well, people hate banks, but they only put money in banks. So I think that's a, that's a competitive advantage. And the, this is relevant uh, because it's, uh, it's total digital, digital transformation, and we started with WSO2. And like, and like the other systems that we started with other journeys, and then we have to move and migrate, this one uh, was started all with W2, using the identity manager. We, we moved to uh, micro-integrator, other things that I'm going to cover, cover that. But basically, this is a, a bank in a, in a wallet. You can make deposits, you can have your credit card, Basically, basically everything. It's uh, targeted to younger people than, than the, for the normal bank. And uh, basically, we had like 100,000 clients without doing any advertising like in a period of six months. This year, we, we want to ramp this up. And so, so basically, uh, uh, going on what the challenges of the market are and how did they, we use uh, W? WSO2 to tackle them. First, time, I'm going to start with identity, identity server. I think that this is one of the most important tools that we have used from, uh, from WSO2. One, you know, the challenges is like, uh, you know, legacy systems with proprietary. Uh, we had to use like HSMs. We had to, uh, in Mexico, also the as I told you, law enforcement and a lot of social engineering, uh, a lot of account takeover. So we need to, to have a, a more robust system than, than, than the legacy ones that we had. No? So basically, with the benefits of WSO2, we have, well, we consolidate identity on, on all bank systems. Since we don't have any branches, we'd like to have like a single sign-on on, on all the systems, whether they are corporate, uh, private banking, or credit card, which is our, our, our biggest... Uh, obviously, the easy integration of, of some systems, like it's open source. And also, the last one, federated, uh, Mexican regulation has come short of open banking. There has been a lot of reluctance and opposition from big, big banks, to, to play in that scape, and also the regulator has some fear of account takeover on some, I would say, the most vulnerable sectors of, of society in Mexico. They are vulnerable to getting, you know, their credentials stolen and so forth. So the regulation has come short of an open banking. What they have started, they are going to publish very, uh, very soon, is uh, something of a digital agent. So someone can have an app, let's say like a, you have like an Uber app, but that Uber can send an API to a bank to open an account, but it's actually the bank that opens the account. It's not 
that you federate. I, actually, you turn over basically the session to the bank. So that's what the government is at least. It will probably evolve as always to open banking in the future and so on. So I think that we are kind of prepared by using the, the identity server in, the, in that sense. Uh, next one, as I told you, since this is the micro integration, we started with Enterprise Integrator, and since we were using PASS, which is basically for credit cards, a bunch of transactions, and, we, and our uh, strategy is to have a specialized score, we don't have the need to integrate that much. So most of the rules are within the core systems. So we use like only like I would say like a light layer of integration. So a micro integrator has come has come very handy. And also in the in the in that journey we had a lot of we call it in the Spanish manomatic processes which are half automatic half manual. So and, and I think that that happens all the world not only in Mexico and. So they, they say that there's nothing more permanent than a temporary solution. So it stays there like forever. Uh, so in that journey, we try to basically make the process shorter, get it automated, integrate it in the and fast. And as I told you, since this is a transactional system, most of it, because we basically just broker APIs between, between core systems and the app, maybe some kind of a CRM that, that we did. So, so micro-integrator micro has come very handy. We started, to be honest, with the enterprise integrator, but we have moved to the, to the micro-integrator because it's a lot more simple, lighter, nimble in, it, in its uh, handling and, and, and the approach. And as, as you can see, I'm probably not going to go into, into, into all these details, but basically it gave us you know, the agility to integrate uh, faster and lighter, and uh, in case we need to do kind of a, a quick change or so, it, it, gave, it gave us that, that, that ability. And uh, then we have the API manager. Uh, as, as I was telling you, we basically were banking on APIs direct from one system to the other. It grew so rapid that we lacked some of the things that we're saying, no lack of documentation, lack of governance, very important security. We, we did not uh, uh, you know, cover security in the way we should have covered or, or, or we should have taken care of at the beginning. So uh, the, the API manager gave us a, a bunch of things. No? Today I, I was listening that uh, the security layer of the that they were discussing in the in the panel before uh, that's one thing that, that they gave us uh, the api manager we could do it in conjunction with the identity server which that prevent us from a, from a bunch of fraud uh, we were able to standardize a lot of the apis we were able to track them which is was very important because uh, what we did was ha kind of have a different type of logs and all things maybe throughout the place, if you will, and, and this gave us the order. I, I think it gave us basically the governance on an API, it's the security features that we needed, uh, the ability to register, audit, log, uh, compatibility, compatibility with, they were compatible with SOAP and REST and uh, the like, and, uh, and we, we also were able to do some kind of analytics like with the ELK and so forth. So, so basically that's, that, that has been our journey on, on WS2 using this, uh, these three tools. And uh, basically, well, in order just kind to finalize how our journey has been on, the, on this one, it, our conclusions is that First and foremost is the development and implementation of APIs under governance and security. I think that has been instrumental in our growth and in our integration. Uh, second point, well, improvements from API through a roll-on profile-based system. Uh, the orchestration of business processes, as I told you, we wanted to get simple. I mean, we, we have always been a, on a crusade against over-engineering over you know over editing some things uh, over doing extra checks because all the, all those things uh, i don't know if in the us and other countries but in mexico programmers tend to be 
very uh, afraid of things, and they have to, if they have to do one check, they do two or three. So that's not efficient, so that's one of the things that we have been trying to tackle. Uh, consolidated identity system management, because we had, you know, three, four apps, three, four web pages. We have different user ID names, password, HSM here and there. So consolidation is, is one of the pieces. Uh, monitoring, very important to monitor, monitor things uh, along the way and uh, to have logs in, that are kind of native, not, not to build them and put them uh, wherever. And, uh, you know, flexibility to use different program languages. And, uh, and I think that will... Uh, and the last one is, uh, even though the regulation in Mexico is not for open banking, we believe that someday it will be there. Uh, since the size of our bank is not that big, typically, we are the ones that benefit for the ones that are more afraid on open banking is the big banks that they think they will lose clients but in the end i think it's a journey of what the service what's the service you give what's the advantages you give the customer in terms of of ux and and so forth so well basically i have like this will finish the presentation i have like 10 minutes if i'll open it up for questions and